In 2022, the New York Giants hired Joe Shane after Dave Gellman was fired after horrifically trying to rebuild this franchise for five years with five straight losing seasons. Joe Shane came in, and the Giants went 9-7-1 after Brian Dable had a really good year of winning Coach of the Year. The Giants were not expected to do anything this year, but ended up winning a playoff game. But how we got here was Joe Shane started off his first free agency. He was had his hands tied down with a really bad cap situation. They had to cut James Radbury to free up cap six to sign their draft picks. He started off by signing Mark Lewinsky to a three-year, $18 million contract. He ended up only playing two seasons. You signed John Feliciano for one year, and he left and became a superstar on the 49ers. Well, not really, but he played really good, and it was part of the Super Bowl team. They signed Tyra Taylor, which is probably top three signing, which is not a good thing, by Joe Shane. He ends up leaving two years after, after handling a terrible situation with him with the starting role, Tommy DeVito. Matt Burrito, we signed and ended up getting another contract because he performed well behind Saquon Barkley. Now you get to the really bad part about Joe Shane's job. It's his first draft class needs to be your cornerstone franchise players. You had two top 10 picks, and one of them is on the bench. Now these picks are Kayvon Thibodeau, the fifth overall pick, seventh overall, Evan Neal. Was an absolute stud at Alabama, an All-American, and one of the best tackles of all time in college football history. Only allowed one sack and 700 pass block attempts. Now, the problem with Evan Neal is he's just horrible and has horrible footwork. But Kayvon Thibodeau was supposed to be one of the, the top pass rushers in the draft and has yet to really show productivity throughout his career. Well, he's shown it in spurts, but it has not been a – a uh, consistent product on the playing field. Now, when you look at the rest of this draft class, it's really bad. Then you go and draft Wanda Robinson. This is this is a good pick. This is probably your best pick in this draft, and that's not really saying much. Wanda Robinson's a solid player, but is he a superstar? No. Is he a star? No. But he's a good player. So you want to always find good players in the second round or third round. Now, you get to the third round. You get two third round picks. The Giants had like eight picks in this draft and botched all of them. I mean, you get to the third round pick, Josh Azudu. Josh Azudu has only started like seven games in his career. He played a majority of them at tackle. He played three at guard and got hurt. He is on the bench, and you were hoping this guy could be a, a starting piece on your offensive line. Cordell Flott is looking like a total disgrace at corner. He cannot cover. He cannot play outside. He's totally lost himself. He is not looking like he could start on a football field. Dalen Bellinger had a promising rookie year, then got hurt, and then you never really – see him starting anymore after losing his job to Darren Waller the next year. Dane Belton, strong safety, never plays. I mean, he, doesn't see, he never sees the field. He plays maybe a couple snaps a game or maybe a couple snaps a year. Mikey McFadden is looking like a really solid player, but it, can he do it again? He had some tackling issues last year. DJ Davidson, you never see him. I mean, he plays sometimes, but should not be a starter. Marcus McKeithen, cut. Darian Beavers, practice squad and that would just you know looking down the draft then you're looking three years later at the time it was looking okay now you get to 2023 and the giants go six and eleven they obviously take a decline from the year they made the playoffs on a playoff game and you're thinking before the year when you're adding guys like darren waller that you're gonna take a step forward and compete in this division the new york giants in 2023 they've Gave Daniel Jones $160 million. They weren't able to come to a deal with Saquon Barkley, so they tagged him. They trade for they trade a third round pick and a fifth round pick for Darren Waller. They signed Bobby O'Karake for four years, $40 million. This is probably his best signing. Darren Waller only played 11 games, so scored one touchdown. Paris Campbell to a $6.7 million deal to play slot receiver or outside receiver. He miserably failed. Could not do that. Only averaged a yard per catch. Signed Asian Robinson, he was a really good run stuffer, but he left after a year. Signed a team known as Rochez. Hasn't done much. He's not really been good in the run game that's what he's supposed to be good for. He's not really a good pass rusher. He has not lived up to what he's supposed to be. They lost John Feliciano, Julian Love, and then they traded Larry Williams away in the midseason for a second round pick and a fifth round pick for 2025, which was a good trade by Joe Shane because he's a guy expiring on contract. And it gave you some extra draft picks to work with. And now when you get the draft class of this draft, it's looking like another mess. It's looking like you just 
hit like maybe two picks and that's it. And then not even hits. In this draft, you did not have the greatest draft. Like you weren't picking top ten, you're picking top twenty five, the twenty fifth pick. The first pick they drafted Deontay Banks. Deontay Banks had a promising rookie year, but was struggling through training camp this year. But he was he led all rookies and well, he didn't lead all rookies, but he was top three in rookies of past deflections. They drafted John Michael Schmitz, who had a really bad rookie year, couldn't stay on the field, but he's looking a little more promising now. They drafted Jalen Hyatt, trading up their third round pick and I think a fourth round pick to go up and get him. He can't even get like 10 snaps a game. He's not, he did barely played his rookie year. He started a couple games. He only started like six games his rookie year. Jordan Riley, oh, well, excuse me. Trey Hawkins was drafted in the sixth round. Trey Hawkins was looking to be maybe a star or a potential starter all throughout training camp, but little did you realize the Giants just had really bad wide receivers. And Jordan Riley in the seventh round, I don't really expect much from that. And Javarius Owens, who got cut in the practice. He's on the practice one now. So when you look back in 2023, the Giants thought they closed the gap within the division of all the teams, which was not the case. They maybe with the Eagles, they were, they were able to compete with them, but not the Cowboys. The Cowboys absolutely destroyed them. They thought their receiving core was turning curve. They thought Darren Waller was going to be the number one receiver for his Daniel Jones. Darren Waller ends up retiring, does not play. And it was an utter disaster. The season was a disaster. The way they handled the kicker situation, the quarterback situation, everything was a disaster. The old line was lit up. NFL, the second most sacks in the NFL history of 85, the most in Giants history, of course. And you just couldn't compete with this team. So you're hoping, you know, 2024 was not going to be a good year. Obviously, with the years before, how, or the year before, how badly they played. And, you know, you're just hoping improvement. Daniel Jones gets hurt, ACL tear. So you go in the 2024's offseason, and you know you need to improve the offensive line. You know you need to improve the defense. And the Giants go out there and blunder it all, of course, getting no corners. In 2024, the Giants signed. They they signed and trade for Brian Burns. They traded a second-round pick and a fifth-round pick for Brian Burns. They gave him a five-year, $141 million contract. And yet, has he recorded a sack? He has one pressure. And no quarterback hits. Now, obviously, it's the beginning of the season, so you got to see how that plays out. But right now, it's not looking like the best of contracts, or it just might not be the scheme that's helping them out. Then you go out and get Jermaine Illuminor, which is, this is a good signing. This this was a really good free agency for Joe Shane, but the players he signed, at least. But after, when I get to the next part, it's it like kind of balances out. To like basically, you didn't really upgrade your team, so it's not going to be that good. You sign. Jermaine Illuminor for two years, $14 million, which is our starting right tackle because your seventh overall, seventh overall pick can't see the field because he's unplayable he, and he's lazy, and that's why he's not playing is because the new offensive coordinator, Cameron Bissello, said he's lazy and he doesn't try pretty much. And that's your seventh overall pick. This needs to be your cornerstone of your franchise. He's out here on the bench. So you signed him. John Runyon, he's going to, for three years, $30 million, he's looking like a pretty good player, and he's hoping to be that left guard for the next three years. So I have no problem with that. Greg Van Rowan is filled in that right guard spot of a better minimum of $2 million for one year. So he's really helped in the continuity with Jermaine Illuminor on the right side to help Daniel Jones stay upright this season. But in free agency, you lost Saquon Barkley, a leader. You lost Xavier McKinney, a leader. You lost Sean Robinson, a really good run stopper. And you lost Tyron Taylor and Darren Waller retired. And you didn't really do anything to go and replace most of these positions. Only the only time they replaced the like the defensive back room after because they they resigned Dory Jackson. I mean, she's not really playing for some reason, but they did not really improve in the defensive aspect because when you lose Leonard Williams, you need to go out in the next offseason and replace a guy like that. They're replacing him with Jordan Riley, known as Rochez, and uh, Elijah Chapman, a seventh round pick, an undrafted rookie, and a below average defensive tackle. So when you double ta- when you double team Dexter Lawrence, it's going to open up the run game so much because you only have to stop one guy. So you need that pass rush to get there, and that's what they were hoping for getting Brian Burns. But the Giants' cornerbacks can't hold. Besides Deontay Banks, the Giants' cornerbacks haven't been able to do the job. But once you get to the draft, they tried. 
to get a guy like Lasseter or McKinstry, but because the run of corners went, they only they had to settle with Tyler Newman. But when you get to this draft class, it's looking like his best one yet. So this is looking like his best free agency class besides losing those players and his best draft class, even though it's still early. But in the first round, he drafted Malik Neighbors, six overall. He drafted Tyler Newman, who's looking promising. Second round, the 47th pick. Andrew Phillips, who I was not a fan of when they drafted him. He was looking like a star now. The seventh overall pick. Theo Johnson has one catch on the year so far. He's not really got much targets. The fourth round pick, 107th overall. Tyrone Tracy in the fifth round to try to get another run back in here after losing Saquon Barkley. And they also signed Devin Singletary to a... Let me look at it. They signed Devin Singletary to a three-year, $16.5 million contract. So he's only taking up like $4.5 million per year in the run back room, which is pretty good. Um, and then they want Darius Muasau, who was starting the first game against Vikings, but did not really look like good in coverage. So how bad is Joe Shane really? I mean, obviously, it, he did not was not able to get his quarterback the first two years of his career with the Giants. So obviously, when you don't get your quarterback, it's harder to really build your identity around a team because – when you get the quarterback you like, you know what you need to get to build around him. Daniel Jones wasn't his quarterback. He was inherited, but he did pay him that contract. So could it be possible that two GMs and three coaches die in the same bed as Daniel Jones? Or did they get this Joe Shane and Brian Dable get another chance to rebuild the Giants?